Hi, I'm Emily Holden, a medical illustrator and animator, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to finish up my tutorials on how to create DNA in Maya. Now, I posted part one of this a very long time ago, probably about two years ago now, and a lot has happened in that space, but I'll probably update you in a completely separate video. So for now, let's just jump into Maya and look at how we can create DNA. So this process is using only mash. And what we'll be creating, it looks a little bit like this. And this isn't using any dynamics or anything. This, this is just made using all of Maya's inbuilt mash tools. So what I'm going to do is I've just set up the scene quite simply with two spheres that are created using a cube and I've smoothed them out to the second subdivision. And what this is for is that if further down the line I want to use any texture maps or bump maps, then the topology is going to be a little bit nicer than if I just use a sphere. And I've just attached a cylinder to the end of each of these. Then what I did was select all my mesh and I've just combined these by going to Mesh and Combine. And then, good practice, just delete its history. Now what we want to do is go to the Mash tool set and then click on the Mash Waiter. Now you can see that this is distributing the shape in a straight line. Now if I open up the Mash Editor, what I want to do is to switch the Mash Geometry type. And what this does is it changes it from a mesh to an instancer, so it means that it's a little less heavy on my computer. Now if we go into the Distribute settings, we want to reduce the distance X and increase the distance Y. And I also want to increase the amount of points. And then if we go to the rotate Y, we can start to increase this and you can see that it's rotating round. Now this isn't twisting enough, so I'm just going to manually input 1000 and then I can use the slider to adjust it a little bit more. Now I can see that I actually want a couple more points in this. And already you can see really quickly it's made a very basic but pretty nice looking DNA. Now one thing we can do is we can actually adjust this rotate Z slightly. What this does is add a, adds a bit of a tilt to it. Now if you look at a reference of accurate DNA, it's not really got as simple a twist as it looks. It's in a double helix. And using this method, you can't really get it exactly accurate. You can also play with the Z offset, just so it doesn't look like it's just a plain old flat duplicated shape that's been just twisted around. So you can play with all these options until you're happy with the look. And at this stage, I'm pretty happy with it for the sake of this tutorial. Now, the great thing about using the mash tools is that you can adjust these and animate them as well. So if you're wanting to have your DNA kind of like unraveling or going the opposite way and kind of twisting around, you can set keyframes on all these attributes. So I'm just setting a keyframe on the rotate Y. And I also know that towards the beginning of my animation, the distance was a little bit too close. So I'm also going to animate the distance Y as well. And you can see that looks quite fancy if that's what you're going for. This is quite a typical effect that you'll see sometimes when people are visualizing DNA. Another thing that you can use is the offset properties. And then you can see that this is, it's just offsetting where it is in the space. So this can make it look like all these, all these parts, the molecules are building up and stacking on top of each other. 
So if we put all these things together, you can see some of the fun things that you can achieve by just playing only with the Mass Distribute tools. Now I'm just going to remove all of those animations. And the next thing I want to look at is how to create a little bit of movement as if it's in an environment. So I'm going to add a signal node. And then what I want to do is just reduce all of these positions. And you can see when you do that, it gives this kind of jiggle to each of the shapes that's in the network. If you go down to the trigonometry settings, you'll see the noise scale, and this will have an influence on how much these shapes are moving. So you can see that if I reduce the noise scale to 0.2-ish, then it's actually making it the movement not so chaotic. There's lots of different signal type settings that you can look at. I actually like the fractional Brownian motion. Now if we look at this, it looks like it's just jiggling slightly, and we can adjust the these positions here just to make it have a little bit more influence on the shape. But maybe not that much. And let's say we want to go and populate the rest of this scene. What you can do is you can just duplicate this mash network. And this is a reason why it's really good to use the instancer in this case because this could make your scene very heavy if you keep it as a repro mesh. So when you've got your second mesh network, I'm going to add a transform node. And this will help me move it around. In the attribute editor for the mesh transform, we want to go under the transform tools and under controller null, we want to right click and press create. And this will just create the transform tool that you'll be used to. And then you can just move it around and place it where you want it to be in the scene. Now if we play this back, you can see that they are both got the motion to them, but they're maybe a little bit too similar at this point. So this is why I like to just do it as a duplicate of the MASH network, because then you can just go back into your signal and then you can just adjust maybe the noise scale or something slightly, and then this will just offset the animation a bit and give it a little bit more of a natural feel. So actually, now that we've gone over some of those basic things, I just want to take a look at this because the shape itself, I'm, I want to look at how I can make it so that we don't have the two cylinders replicated so close together. You can see that when you're using MASH, you can unhide your original shape and then adjust the shape. It'll have an influence on the whole MASH network. But at this point, it's just a little bit messy. So just to make this a little bit clearer for you, I'm just going to go a little bit back to the beginning so that you can see what's going on. What I've done is I've just duplicated the same shape and I've deleted the cylinders and I'm just rotating it round so that it's looking like it might be following a similar path to that twist that we had earlier on. I'm going to go back in and create a mash network. And then doing the same again, we're going to rotate the Y. And increase the number of points. Now I can see that the additional spheres that I've added aren't quite in the right place. So what I'm going to do is just go in and select both of them with the face select tool and just adjust them. And you can see that when I'm doing this, it will affect the whole of the MASH network. Now that I am doing this, I think this is actually producing a bit of a nicer shape. It's looking a little bit more like the double helix that you'd be wanting it to look like. So this is something for you to consider when you're working on your own projects.
Now, while you're here, I've covered the basis of quite a few different ways of making DNA if you check out my previous tutorial as well. But what I want to do is I just want to draw your attention to this other amazing medical animators YouTube channel and that is the channel by 3D Splanchnik and he has a really great video on making modeling DNA in Maya and he goes a little bit more into detail on how you can achieve that really nice double helix look. This is another method that is great to use as well and I'm not just going to I'm not going to try and talk you through his method when he's done it so so well himself. So hop over there and then you'll have so many different ways to choose from and you can go with whatever suits you best and suits your project best. So thank you so much for tuning into my tutorial. It has been a very long time and I apologize for anyone who has actually been waiting for this video. The long lost part two of how to create DNA in Maya. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, then please subscribe because I will make more tutorials. Thank you so much for tuning in.